How do you do, Mrs. Schultz? Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon. This letter for you was in the mailbox. I was on my way to my room, so I brought it up. Thank you. How is everything at your delightful place for children? Oh, it's really inspiring. When I watch those happy kids completely enjoying themselves, ah, I've never been so happy in all my life. Now, will you excuse me? Why, certainly. By all means, read your letter. Yes, you must visit us sometime. There's nothing like it for a tonic. Watching those kiddies at play, <laughs> it makes you want to be one of them again. Good news, I take it? The good news is right, Stephen. It's a job, work, money. Oh, has the university offered you your old position again? No, it's from an old friend of mine, Professor Pennyworth. He advises me of an opening with a husband by the name of Morley. Well, I must go immediately. Well, that's fine. That's certainly fine. You'll excuse me. Why, certainly, of course. Oh, the Indian. Indian? Yes, yes, I had to take the Indian. Well, wish me luck. Goodbye. 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 Monsieur. Monsieur Morley. Uh, what have you ever done? Well, my latest work is an anthropology on the North American Indian. Oh, is it? Yes, I brought it here with me. All right, keep it. I want no part of it. <laughs> I didn't think you would. I don't like you. I beg your pardon. You're a poor, pettifogging, spineless book worshiper. I detest your kind. Really? Is that why you asked me to come here? However, I... I guess you'll answer my purpose. Pennyworth speaks very well of you. The salary will be $200 a month with keep. Well, that's very good of you. But allow me to tell you that I think you're a brutal, insulting old boy. And you can take your job and... All right, that's better. Now we understand each other. You're engaged. Yes, sir. Well, what is it? They are here, monsieur. Uh, bring the boy to me and have the woman wait. Well, yes. I have. And you stay. Yes, sir. Go to Monsieur Morley. How do you do? You never met me, but I'm your grandson, Roy. Ah. I hope you're well. Mommy said to be a good boy and not cause you any trouble. Ah. Because it's very good of you to take us in now that we haven't any place to go. Ah. You think that's good of me, do you? Yes, sir. Mommy says you're good and kind, and you're the only one we got to help us. Come here, you. Oh, uh, my name is Applegate, John Sylvester. All right, come here. Yes. This is my grandson, Master Lawrence. He used to be your special charge. Oh, that's fine. We know each other. Huh? How do you know him? Oh, it was merely an accidental meeting in the park this afternoon. Uh. He's awfully nice, Grandpa. Bought me this for my birthday. Yeah. I'll give it back. Obey me. Thank you, Master Lord. I will supply you with everything you need or want. Yes, sir. And you are to instruct my grandson in the duties and the requisites of a gentleman and see that he conducts himself as such. Do you understand? You'll need my help in that. Yes, sir. If he's to live in a place like this. You get out and prepare to assume your duties immediately. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Applegate. Hope you come back soon. I want to know all about baseball. I shall, Mr. Goodbye, sir. All right, get out. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Morley. Good morning. Oh, please. I must talk to you. You left this on the park bench when you went away. Oh, thank you. You found it. No, I... I took it. Oh. Well, you must have needed it very badly. It's the first dishonest thing I've ever done, I... I did need money. I'm sure you did. 
Please let me explain. I didn't want to come here looking so shabby and destitute. It took every penny I could raise to bring us here from Europe, and even though we're begging. You want to arrive on horseback? Yes, that's it. You do understand, don't you? Of course I do. You were quite right. I would have done the same thing myself. There's some of your money left, and I'll repay you the rest as soon as I can. It doesn't matter. I'm happy to have helped. Monsieur, your room will be ready when you return. Oh. Oh, uh, Mr. Morley has just engaged me as tutor to your son. Oh. Will you do me a favor? Yes, sir. Will you keep this for Laurie? Thanks. Madame, if you will bring your things, I will show you where to put them. Prediction has come true. Yes. I can only plead for mercy. Mercy? Did you have any compassion for me? Did you regard all the years of love and care I squandered on you when you ran off with your lover? No. But I say to him, yes. Ah, to yourself to your selfish pride and vanity. But what is to pay me for all of the years of my loneliness, humility, and heartache? I can't ask forgiveness for myself. I know that's hopeless. But for my fault, I ask for forgiveness. Hmm. Because his father deserted him as shamelessly and ruthlessly as you did me. I'd gladly give my life if I could live that time over again and change it. I knew the time would come when you would beg for my help. I knew it had to come. And you will help me. From now on, the boy will have everything that wealth and power can provide. Father! But you will never see him again. You will be as completely cut off from him as I was from you when you left me. You will pay me year for year, heartache for heartache. That is what I offer you in exchange for your boy. You mean I, I would never see him again? Oh, you can't. You're not that cruel. You're my father. I know you. You don't mean that. That is my decision, unequivocally. Either take yourself and your boy back to the slums in the gutter or leave him here with me. Stay here for dinner. Then you can tell him that you are going away for a long time. Anything you like. I'll give you money to get out of the city. Some place where the boy and I shall never see you again. Father, you could You had better accept. Thank you. 
this is a wonderful birthday. Now, Mommy, I told you everything would be all right when you got here to Grandpa's. Yes. Everything will be all right. I'm awfully sleepy, Mommy. You must go to bed early. And when you wake up in the morning, Mommy will be... What? What is it? Mommy won't be here. You won't be here? Why? Mommy has something she must do. And you must stay here with Grandpa and be very good to him. You see, he lost someone a long, long time ago. And it left an aching, empty place in his heart. Poor Mommy. Someone he loved very much. Then. And you must try to fill that place. But I wouldn't want to stay here without you. Couldn't I go with you? No, dear. But you must remember Mommy while she's away. You won't forget her, will you, dear? I could never forget you. You're my mommy. And you mustn't worry. Because if you ever need me, somewhere, somehow, I'll know. And I'll come right back. Will you promise me? I'll do just what you want me to. Nine o'clock, you will see that Master Lunch retires. Also, that the woman leaves this house. Yes, Mr. Morris. You'll also give her that package of money. Well, uh, shall I give her any message? No message. Get out. I can't accept it. It would seem as though I was selling it. For yourself. See, you'll have to excuse me, but I, I realize your position and you'll need money. Not that money. Then, please, may I let me give this to you? No, I, I couldn't. But what are you going to do? Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be all right. But I may not see my boy for a long time. He'll be a stranger. He used to love and affection. Will you be kind to him? Oh, you can depend on that. And uh, if you let me know where you are, I'll keep you informed. I'm afraid that isn't possible. I assure you, it'll be quite confidential. Better weeks. 
my lord. I think you'll be quite contented here, huh? It's going to be very nice living in such a beautiful house. With Mr. Applegate to help me with everything. In the... Only what? It's going to be kind of lonesome here without money. Yeah, well, there'll be other things to think of. It's kind of funny when you miss somebody a whole And on other things. She'll be gone a long time. Mummy told me that you lost somebody that you love very much. So I guess you know how it is. Yes, yes. That leaves a great big hole inside of you, doesn't it? Uh, come in. Good morning, Mr. Morley. Good morning, Master Lord. Good morning, Mr. Applegate. Uh, you run along now. You better get dressed. You're going out. You and me, Grandpa? No, you and this man. Can't you come too? Uh, not today. Uh, you run along. I'll get dressed right away, Mr. Applegate. Well, did you have some instructions for me, Mr. Morley? Yes. You are to take my grandson to the most exclusive shop in town and purchase him everything needed for a complete wardrobe. Yes, sir. Buy him anything that strikes his fancy. Gratify his every whim without reservation and let him know that it is I, his grandfather, doing this for him. Do you understand? Thoroughly. Uh, you ought to do everything to center his mind on this house. I want him to forget his former associations completely. With the exception of yourself, sir, have I complete charge of the young gentleman? Entirely. And see that you do it well. It's a responsibility I shall enjoy. I'll supply you with money and everything needed. Oh, I have this money. The lady refused to accept it. Well, uh, spend it on the boy, every cent of it. And under no circumstances ever discuss that woman with my grandson. Get out. Yes, sir. Is this a pleasant just for little boys and girls, Mr. Applegate? Mm -hmm. Think you like it? Can I go in the airplane? Place is yours, old fellow. Help yourself.
that. It's great. I like this place. Do you? Well, we'll come often. I think it's fun, but I wish Mommy was here. Yes, and then it would be just as it should be. Shane Poopin. Shane Poopin. Shane Poopin. Does he think of me and speak of me? Oh, yes, indeed. We talk volumes about Mommy. I see him once in a while. I feel him in my arms. But that's hopeless. I don't suppose you understand my father's attitude. What is necessary? I broke his heart by running away. When I thought I'd found a grace of him. But it wasn't love. My husband deserted me before my baby was born. Something of a rotter, wasn't he? He was killed in a motor accident last year. Oh, I'm sorry. That doesn't change my opinion. I mustn't think of it. My baby's happy and well cared for now. That's all that matters. Except yourself. Oh, I'll be all right. If I can find work and hear from Laurie occasionally. Through your kindness. Thank you. You know, you're the only friend I have. I'm glad. You see, I'm even more alone than you are. What I need is someone to, uh... Well, I, I, I need responsibility. Do you know what I mean? Well, no. Not entirely. <laughs> Does sound kind of silly, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Not coming from you. I think you're the nicest person I ever met. You, you do? Mm -hmm. Yes. You've done so much for me. If you'd only help me find a job. A job? I must work, and when I've nothing to do, I miss Laurie the most. Nothing means much unless you have someone to love and care for, does it? No. And when you've had the love of a child, nothing can take its place. That's what I meant by responsibility. I want a little kitty. Well, I don't know how I could help you. Oh. Oh, I didn't mean that you... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You see, what I meant is... Well, you see, I... I know there are lots... Come on. I have an idea. What is it? Never mind. Come on. If I move there, you get two men. Uh -huh. Well, I see a move where I'll only get one man and you get my king. Where? Right there. Oh. Now I got you. <laughs> I hate to give when you know you win in the end. Monsieur, uh, the gentlemen from the bank are here. Yeah, send them in. Gentlemen. The grandpa is going to be busy for a while, so you run out and play, huh? Have a seat at my desk there, Lane. Thank you. What is it, gentlemen? Central America again? Yes. Conditions there are great. The board of the bank wouldn't act without first consulting you as chairman. That's why town are here. Ah. We cannot endanger the position of our investors, Molly. Investors? What Tommy rot is that? I'm your investors, I'm your bank. Our grant shows in the major holdings, but why gamble? We can sell our interest to the Pan Americans. I don't sell, Townsend. I buy. Your personal affairs is none of my business, Molly. But I can't understand your late feverish interest in space. No? Come here. Yeah. Look there. What? 
I'll get it, Mr. Morley. Yeah, wait a minute. Let him get it himself. That's the answer to why I'm building for the future, Barlow. That boy. It was foolish of you to ask the boy to do that, Morley. It was a needless risk. I don't approve it. No, you wouldn't. You can do anything when you have determination and courage. Gentlemen, this is my grandson, Lawrence. Happy to meet you, Lawrence. You You're a fine boy. It's some pleasure. Now, gentlemen, will you settle that Central America business? Come here, boy. Take a letter to the board. Yes, sir. Then, June 27, 1929. Usual salutations. The new oil and mining development in Central America will go through regardless of any obstruction. It is my wish that we finance this deal 100%. Molly, have you considered this? I have utter confidence in the project, and in return for your support, I will personally guarantee the Transcontinental Bank against any loss. Remember, Molly. We've been on a rising market for three years. And if a crash should come, even your fortune would be strained. Yeah, that's all, Lane. Transcribe it and send a copy for my signature. Very well, sir. Anything else, gentlemen? We'll follow your lead, of course, Morty. Uh -huh. It's a habit and a risk. Conditions being as they are. Mm -hmm. We'll see you at the bank at the quarterly meeting in October. Yeah. Good day. Come here, boy. Did you understand that? Yes, sir. When you want something done, you send a letter. Well, that was a game Grandpa played with those two men just now called money. Yes, you're only seven. I almost forgot that. But, but you learn. You learn fast. You learned something just now when you rescued your airplane. Now I'll keep my promise. What do you want? It isn't anything much, and Mommy told me not to worry. Well, what is it? I want to write her a letter, like you did just now, and tell her how much I miss her. Do you forever think of her? Sure I do, and I know she thinks of me, too, because I miss her so. I'm afraid I can't promise that. Don't you miss her, too? I did once, a long time ago. Then you know how it is, don't you? Here we are. Owing to this custom of the squaw taking the papoose to the fields where she would labor, among certain tribes of the... Ah, uh, Mr. Applegate, what's a papoose? A papoose is an Indian baby. Well, what's a squaw? Well, the squaw is the Indian baby's mother. And the Indian baby's mama takes the Indian baby every place she goes? In a sling or a sort of, a sort of cradle that hung on their backs. Gee, that must be nice. Yes. I know who you're thinking of. Yeah, let's see, where were we? Now, owing to this custom, the squaw taking the papoose to the fields where she would labor a month. Come eat your lunch. I'm not hungry, really, Mrs. Brooklyn. Eat, or I am the one who gets the blame. Reading about the papoose makes me think of mommy. I wonder when she's coming back. She's not coming back. Forget her. She is, too. She wouldn't forget. Be still. I'm not going to jabber it's off. Et toi, qu'est-ce que tu fais ici? Ta mère, tu ne vois rien, tu devrais être avec elle. Mr. Lawrence, would you rather take a drive? Yes, sir. Oh, he must eat his lunch. Come on, get your coat and we'll take a nice drive. Madame, je désire un mot avec vous. Monsieur, you speak French. Fluently. And understand it even better. Oh. If I ever hear you speak so to that child again, I'll cut your ugly throat oh. from ear to ear. Oh, no, no, no! no.
nice chunk. Cream spinach, big fat potato, orange custard, and uh, root punch. How's that sound, Master Lorry? I don't care much. Things progressing well, Steve? Very happily indeed, Professor. I was very glad to be of service in the matter. Well, how would you like to take a little ride on the airplane, Lorry? Give you a great big effort. Could I go over to the worship room? That's a fine idea. I think you'll find some very interesting things over there. Excuse me. All right. Come back soon. And send her lots of kisses because I love her heaps and heaps. And ask her to send me a letter and tell me that she loves me. That's all I can think of right now. Goodbye. Very devoutly. Her wishes are thoughts. When they're good thoughts, they're bound to come true. I told them to write it down, just like Grandpa does his letters. Do you think Mommy will get it? I know she will. I'll even see about it myself. Will you excuse me? Yes, sir. to announce you, Professor. It wasn't necessary, thanks. Excuse me. You can never realize what you've done for me. Why, you brought back happiness. I've heard my boy say he, he loves me and me thinking of me. And I'm more than the day. Oh, I don't know how to thank you. But why now I can believe that, that sometime I'll, I'll be able to see him. I can arrange that. Oh, no. No, he, he mustn't see me do it. He wouldn't understand. I must be content just to, to hear his voice. And uh, it's someone else who's sometimes lonely, had a message to send. I mean, is there room for another message? Oh, that is... Uh, Quite hard to say it. Well, why don't you consult the wishing man? Do you think I'd find hope there? I do. Well, well then I'll uh, uh, I'll say goodbye for a little while. <laughs> and uh, we'll be sending lots more messages.
Sanders won't stand it, Molly. Yeah. What are we to do? What's the matter, are you afraid? I am, I'll admit it. Huh? Let's stop what's left of that crazy Central American stuff. Now, this is no time to sell. It's simply a mob panic of imbeciles and rats scurrying away from their own stench. You stay and fight for what we've got. But the bank is involved in this, Morley. And I am back of the bank. But it's more than that. Mm -hmm. We're in it, too. Yes, and we won't stand idly by and let you ruin us. Ruin you, you blockhead I made you. Oh, that won't help now, Morley. We're deep in the market. And not only us, but every other member of the board. Yeah. What? We can't stand this, Christ, because... Ah, because you've both been looting the bank, is that it? Well, there are certain investments that would not look legitimate to bank examiners. Ah, you swine, you crook. You've got to stand with us, Morley. You're in this as much as we are. Hmm? We back your Central American scheme. And I am still back of it with every dollar I've got, but not with you, you Nibbling thieves, you cringing pickpockets. Now get out of here before I have you thrown in the street. You suffer for this, Morley. Yeah. You can't get away with it. Yeah. The bank will collapse and you can't see. All right, you get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. You'll be sorry, Morley, you didn't stick with us. We yeah. have your guarantee. All right, right, you get out. Get out. Get out. remember that that is not part of the game. Dishonesty is the rules. Huh. 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 Yeah, you, Mr. Molly? Uh, no, no, no. No, I'm all right. I'll, I'll go to my room. You me, Grandpa? Huh. What do you make out, Lane? That'll take more time, sir. I'm analyzing the bank examiner's report now. Yeah. Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Morley. Your attorney, Mr. Forbes, is here. Yeah, send him in. Hello, Morley. Hello, yeah, Forbes. Hope you're feeling better. It all depends on your news. Sit down. Thanks. Uh, Applegate. Yes, Mr. Morley. Uh, will you take uh, Master Lawrence out someplace and amuse him? If you don't mind, Grandpa, I'd rather stay here. Uh, haven't you been too much with your old grandfather lately? No, because you're sick and need somebody. Uh, we need each other now. Uh, that's all. You may go. Yes, sir. Go down to our wishing well is and look for a letter for me. Yes, I'll do that. I'll go to the wishing well and ask particularly about that. Well, while you're there, you better send another letter and tell Mummy that Grandpa's sick. All right, Lori. And uh, tell her that. Uh... Nothing can be done. Impossible to stem this debacle. That means the end. The end of the bank, yes. Morley, you're fighting windmills. Legally, you're not required to reimburse the depositors. I promise the depositors of the bank surety for their savings. You are not criminally liable. No. But if I fail them, it will brand the boy as the one to whom Morley gave his stolen money. If nothing else, I leave him a decent, honest name. You realize what it will cost to meet that obligation? Yes. Arrange to sell. 
dispose of everything, leave only a room where we may have peace until I can make other arrangements. It will take everything that you possess. No. No, you're wrong, Forbes. Not everything. Plug it in there. Can you really connect through on this? Yes, sir. We do it quite often. And if you will pardon my question, your indulgence in this childish pastime, you're uh, sure you're quite all right? You uh, haven't had a serious loss in the market? Loss? Oh, 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 no, it's quite all right. You can leave the windows open. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Excuse me. I'm calling for the land of heart's desire. Well, that's a large order. Well, somehow I know that you can fill it. Are you listening? I'm listening. What do you like? Leave off and you get ready to hire us. Leave it alone. What do you get started? How much for it? One hundred. Yeah, I'm going to offer a hundred dollars for it. I got an offer of a hundred dollars. Who gives you for it? A hundred dollars bid on it. Give me two hundred. A hundred and fifty. A hundred and fifty over here. And see that no one is allowed in this part of the house. Yeah, monsieur. Oh, it's you. You're not allowed in here. How is he, Brooklyn? He's very ill. I suppose you are very happy to find him in this condition. I want to see him. <laughs> How do you know he wants to see you? Have you not caused him enough sorrow? That's between me and my father. Mauvaise, on n'a pas idée de faire souffrir son père comme ça. Oh, 
Forgive me, I beg you. You must know I'm sincere. I never meant to hurt you. I never meant to stay away from you. Forgive me. Do you think because I am broken and ill that I am weak and will forgive? Living without my voice. It taught me the loneliness and anguish I caused you. I'm changed. I understand you. Let me stay here, care for you, and love you. To me, you are dead and have been for eight long years. I would rather beg charity in the street than accept anything from you. Oh, please, listen to me. Please. Why have you come here? Do you want your boy back again? Is that it? I only want your love. For my sake. And for love. Is it because I can no longer offer what you expected for your boy that you want him back? <laughs> I might have foreseen that. How proved you to be. When I came here, I had no choice. I had to let you have him then. But now, if you need him, I give him to you with all the love in my heart. I want him to be with you, always. I'll do anything you want. All right. Leave us to ourselves. Leave us to forget that he has a mother, or that I ever had a daughter. Please don't send me away, Please don't. No. And if you want to take the boy with you, I have no legal right to hold him. The Indians. No. Yes. No. Don't you believe me? Look, here's a check for a few thousand dollars. Not only that, but they want me to write a whole series on Chinese or Eskimos. That's it. I'll write it on Eskimos. Oh, Sylvester. That's Lori's birthday cake. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot all about it. Where is it? I sent him out to his father. I want to surprise him. You better get cleaned up, darling. It's late. Go on. Yes. Eskimos. Igloo. Vast frozen space. Earth of caribou. I'll pop and I'll pop and I'll blow your house in. <laughs> that was fine, darling. Yeah. Well, young man, what did you wish for? Birthday, son. What is it? Well, it's the same thing that the people have next door. What's that, dear? A new baby. Ah. Uh, well, I, uh... I better send a letter to the wishing well. Grandpa says you better send a letter. Why, Daddy? <laughs> Come on, darling, you better cut your cake. 